Inserting data. So far, we've learned how to select data from different tables in many different ways. This will help us get the data that we need. But what if we want to add data to a table? Also, the data in the tables that we're selecting from had to get in there somehow, right? SQL allows you to insert data into tables. You can insert data into tables with an insert statement. It's a statement that starts with the keyword insert. The select statement gets data and the insert statement adds data to a table. It looks different to a select statement. An insert statement looks like this. Insert into a table name, column one, column two, and so on. Values, value one and value two, and so on. It starts with the insert into, then the table name that you want to insert data into. Then you have the columns that you want to insert into. Then the word values, then the values that you want to add to the table. You have the option of specifying the columns to insert data into. If you don't specify the columns, the columns are referenced behind the scenes in the order that they are defined in the database, which cannot be guaranteed. So it's better to actually specify the columns in your insert statement. Now you don't need to specify all columns to put data into. If you don't specify a column in your column list, it gets a null value. You can do this as long as the column allows null values. And I'll show you an example of this shortly. In the values clause, you have your values that you're inserting into the table. They align with the columns that you've specified. So if you have three columns, you have three values. Values need single quotes if they are strings, but not if they are numbers. You can also specify a null value. Let's have a look at some examples. We're going to insert a new employee into the employee table. Here is our query. We've specified our columns, which are employee ID, first name, last name, and department ID. Then we're going to specify our values. Let's put in an employee ID of 300. First name of John, last name of Smith, and department ID of three. The first value goes into the first column. The second value goes into the second column, and so on. If we run this query, it'll show one row inserted. It doesn't show us the data that we inserted. To do this, we need to select it. We're selecting all columns from the employee table where the employee ID equals 300, which is the value that we just inserted. We can see all the data here, which is now in our table. We didn't specify all of the columns in our table, so that means the columns we didn't specify are null, such as salary, manager ID, and hire date. If we insert another record, but we specify all of the columns, let's see what happens then. We have our first four columns. Now we enter our salary, which is 31,000, manager ID of 51, and hire date of 4th of Jan, 2017. If we run this query, it says one row inserted. Now we select from our employee table and it shows values for all columns. Now what happens if we don't specify the columns at all when we insert? We'll copy our values from here, but change some of them. Let's 
Let's run our statement. It says here that there's an error. Integrity constraint violated, parent key not found. This might not make a lot of sense to you, but for some reason, it's assuming that one of these values matches to an ID in another table. Perhaps it's looking for a department ID value of 82,000, or a manager ID value of 82,000, and neither of those match. If we do get the columns around the right way, the statement will insert, but it can cause issues if we change the table to remove columns or add a column. Also, it's unclear in this insert statement which columns are being matched to which values. So it's better to always specify the columns in the table that you're inserting into. Insert statements usually insert a single row. If you want to insert multiple rows into Oracle, you can write several insert statements, or you can just use the insert all command. It looks similar to the insert statement. We start with insert all. Then we have for each row into, and then our table name. Then we have our open brackets and we need to put our columns in there. So let's just add in a few of the columns here. Now we add in values. We have an employee ID of 303. And now let's make up some values to put into our column here. Now let's put a second into employee record here. Let's put a third record. Now we end it all with a semicolon. Now this is a single statement. It means that the statement is only run once and it can be faster than individual statements, especially if you have a lot of data to insert. If you happen to look at the insert script that we use to set up this database, I used individual statements to keep it all simpler for you and because it was only 200 rows, but I could have used an insert all. Let's run this statement. It says we get an error here because we're missing a select keyword. This is because with an insert all statement, we need to have a select keyword at the end, but we're not getting any data from our select statement. It's all coming in through our insert values here. So what we can do is use the dual table. We need a select statement, so let's select star from dual. This will satisfy the requirement of needing a select clause here, but we're not getting any data from it. Let's run this statement here, but clear our output first. It says three rows were inserted, and it's all come from the one statement. Now let's select from the table. Let's select from the employee table with the employee ID in, and then we're going to have our values, 303, 304, and 305. You can see our three values are now in the table. So that's how you insert data into a table. Next, we'll learn how to insert data from one table into another table.